Uh, so basically in this webinar, we will talk about uh, using GCS for Teams and I'll basically cover uh, different use cases and sort of different setups on how you can use this to essentially uh, implement the drones in your business uh, or even start a new business with drones. So uh, like I said, I'll cover a few cases in this webinar. Uh, first case will be when in the, in the field, there's only essentially uh, two people. There is a pilot and the observer. Um, this is quite a common case, uh, probably one of the most common cases. And I'll explain how you can use the system and how at least normally you would use it uh, when working, let's say, with just one, one or maybe a few drones. Uh, case number two uh, is also a quite common case in which we have actually also participated quite recently or um, our customer has participated and we've basically assisted them remotely. And this is a search and rescue operation in which a drone team participates. Uh, one example would be if a person would be lost in an avalanche, uh, which uh, you might have probably heard that in recent years uh, or actually recent months has happened quite often. And so then you would work with multiple drones. Also, there would be probably manned aircraft such as helicopters in this area. And so we'll also discuss um, essentially how, how you could use drones in this case. Uh, third case is using drones for perimeter security and surveillance. Exam examples of this would probably include uh, using it in ports uh, or near the railway. Uh, fourth case is distributed inspections, uh, meaning that uh, the pilot can essentially be almost anywhere on the, in the world and that there is one main control center from which you are monitoring uh, the drone flight, from which you are kind of monitoring also these past drone flights and all the data that have been gathered. So some imagery, uh, 3D models, and so on. And fifth case is basically automating uh, drone service provider operations. And when we get to this, I'll also kind of explain what does this mean exactly. But now I think let's focus on case number one. This is pilot and observer in the field. So like I said, this is uh, one of the most common cases that you might encounter uh, when let's say simply two people with a car, they arrive and they have to do the setup and they have to fly with the drone in the field. So uh, the most common challenges that are faced in these sort of scenarios are firstly, that there is quite a complex environment. So this might include the terrain, uh, especially when you're flying near some mountains um, or maybe in some places where there's no terrain elevation data available. Also when you're flying in places where, where there's some no-fly zones. So this might be near some military objects, uh, near some airports, and also uh, traffic might also be a problem. Uh, especially in some more urban scenarios, this is also something that you might face. Uh, then, uh, of course, the drone as well uh, might be quite uh, quite complex, depending on what applications you're using it for. Uh, maybe it might be a GPR, so ground penetrating radar. On it might be a lidar system, or might be a magnetometer. So it really depends on kind of what kind of surveys you are doing. And another challenge I would be the instant. Uh, instant visual inspection that there has to be someone who's kind of monitoring the drone the whole time, who's seeing the video from the drone and essentially ensuring that everything is safe uh, during the flight. So this would be basically the observer who would be always keeping an eye out for the drone and making sure that everything is okay. So uh, in this kind of situation, uh, the most common setup is as follows. So the mission planning on GCS, it's uh, mainly always done on the laptop. So this would be either a Windows or a Mac-based uh, computer. And then uh, assuming when you're flying a DJI drone, so this would include, for example, the Mavic series, uh, Matrice, so M210, uh, M600, uh, DJI Phantom, DJI Inspire, essentially any of the most popular DJI drones that are used for these cases. Um, there we have a specific application created called GCS for DJI. So this can be used on either iOS or Android mobile devices. And so the same way as you're connecting the normal DJI app to the remote controller, same way this is also connected. And then the main thing would be ensuring that uh, both devices, so the computer and the tablet or the mobile phone, whichever you're using, that both of them are connected using a mobile hotspot. And so in this case, the pilot would be holding the remote controller and simply piloting the drone and also monitoring where the drone is in the mission on the tablet. And the observer would be monitoring the drone on GCS on the on the computer and yeah, essentially uh, also following what's happening, how far is the drone in the mission. So there, uh, what so what can actually happen on the laptop? So uh, with GCS, there's a few things what you can use. So firstly, you can actually by default always in GCS you have the 3D map. Uh, so by default we're using SRTM, uh, terrain elevation data, 
but you can actually also import your own terrain elevation data, especially this is useful in cases where uh, this uh, terrain elevation data isn't readily available. So there you can import it. Uh, you can actually make your own maps as well. So you can use your own maps with UGCS. And uh, if you're using maybe some custom sensors, uh, such as, like I mentioned earlier, either GPR or a magnetometer or a LIDAR, something else, uh, then you would also be using the uh, custom payload monitor. This is another app that we have developed specifically for uh, GCS industrial. Uh, then also, of course, on the computer, you can also monitor the video feed coming from the drone. And I'll also talk a bit more about this later and kind of show you examples. And you can actually monitor the telemetry from the drone in the separate telemetry dashboard. And screenshots of this I'll also uh, show to you later. And so here's the setup of how you would use it uh, for an autopilot or PX4 based drones. Uh, so as you can see, there is no remote controller in this case. Well, you would still probably have it with you in the field, uh, but for the most part, the control would happen uh, through the computers. So you can see that uh, for the pilot in this case, the pilot would be using GCS for Windows or for Mac, and that the observer would also actually be using his own laptop. But so you might have the question, so what would be different? And so what would you use on each of these? Uh, between them, you can also see that there's the hotspot uh, or in most cases, this is either a mobile phone hotspot, uh, which is probably the most basic scenario. Uh, but uh, the optimal solution would probably be that you have dedicated uh, five gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi router uh, for this. And keep in mind, you don't necessarily have to have internet. So all of our systems, they also work without internet in offline. So this means that for GCS, it's also possible for you to download the map for offline use. And as long as both devices are connected over the network, there is no need to have the access to internet. So then essentially in this sort of scenario, the pilot would be using, uh, well, the 3D map where you can plan the missions. Um, and also he would be seeing some basic telemetry on the computer. However, then the observer would have the ability to essentially view additional data. So this would include extended telemetry in the, in the uh, telemetry viewer. Uh, in the cases when custom payload is used, he can also use the custom payload monitor and also monitor the video from the drone if the drone is equipped with a camera. So uh, essentially already this gives you a lot more, essentially the more screens you have here in the field, this simply gives you an advantage. And so for these kind of professional use cases, it's, uh, it's a lot more kind of, a lot more applicable and uh, there's a lot more what you can do with the system. And later on also show you video and uh, photos of how, how does this look like in a field. So here, for example, you can see this is just a video uh, taken from the drone flying. So this would be what you would be seeing on the GCS screen. And then right next to it, this is where we have the telemetry viewer. So essentially telemetry viewer now comes uh, together with the GCS starting from version 4.1 that's already on our website. And so with this, what's possible for you to do is that essentially you can choose your own telemetry fields that you want to see here. And uh, these can be displayed. So you can choose whether you want to see the altitude, uh, ground speed, vertical speed, battery voltage, and so on. Because otherwise you can see that here in UGCS screen, the telemetry window, it's kind of, uh, well, you can expand it, but all the data there is fixed. So uh, in many scenarios, especially when you're working with some custom drones uh, based on Pixhawk, uh, yeah, so based on Pixhawk or uh, PX4, so or or PX4. Uh, so yeah, in these cases, it would be also important to be able to see some additional parameters. Uh, one, another example would be that, um, in the new firmware that's uh, going to be coming for autopilot, there's going to be the support for the ECUs uh, of um, basically, essentially, if you're using the hybrid drone, then uh, it's also important for you to monitor the engine control unit and all the parameters of that. And so our, our telemetry viewer already actually supports the features that will be coming with that. And so maybe let, now let's uh, switch on the video. So you can simply see that the drone is currently uh, flying the perimeter mission and so normally this is what you would be seeing. Uh, behind the drone, you can also see that there is a no-fly zone around this area. And so this is just one of the use cases where you could use the drone. And later on also um, kind of give a bit more examples, especially when using drones for, um, for perimeter surveillance and for security purposes. So right now I can just kind of skip ahead a bit in the video. And so basically just here, you can see kind of what would be the standard use case of when you're only using a one drone, for example. So again, then for example, 
the uh, if this would be a DJI drone, the pilot would have his own remote control, remote controller with the mobile application. And for uh, in the case when this would be a, a Pixhawk based drone, so then actually what you could do is you could either of course use all of this on a single screen, or if you have either multiple monitors or even two computers, then you can actually kind of divide that uh, between multiple screens. So I think let's uh, now move further. So here you can actually see this is an image taken by one of our customers. So here you can see the uh, custom drone here in the background with the remote controller. Um, and so, yeah, like I said, uh, in the new version of Artopilot, uh, there's going to be the possibility to monitor, for example, the RPMs of the motor that's um, and other essentially engine control management units uh, parameters. And so all of these in your custom builds, you can essentially add here in the reviewer and then see them in real time. And so this is another kind of um, example under this case. So here you can see that basically there's two computers on one of them uh, here on the, on the right side, this is the same GCS screen that you saw before. And now here on the, on the left side, this is where you can see the video feed. Uh, so uh, it's also actually possible to show videos from either multiple drones or to uh, show videos from some kind of normal standard cameras and from drones as well in, in the, uh, our video viewer. So I think now let's maybe move on to case number two. So this would be uh, when a drone team would participate in a search and rescue operation. And so how, how would that work together with everything else? And so what would be then, uh, what, what would be important in this, uh, in this use case? So there would be a few challenges which you would face when working in this kind of search and rescue environment. Firstly, this would of course mean that there would probably be multiple drone pilots uh, in the same area. And uh, so different drone pilots might use different drones as well. So these might be DJIs, these might be parrot drones, um, Artopilot or Pixhawk based. And also of course in this area, there can be some manned helicopters that are also using their own sensors or maybe just delivering crew and equipment to this area. So kind of all of this uh, needs to somehow be put together and needs to be managed somehow. And the GCS can actually serve as the software that's unifying everything uh, in, in this case. So here you can see kind of how the scene of operation would look like. So here uh, in, the, uh, in the very center, this would be the access point. So again, you can think of this as just like the main router that would be in the, let's say the main control tent uh, where it would be the coordinator for the search and rescue operation. So there, uh, then here, uh, this person would be able to use uh, GCS on either Windows or Mac system. And then here, if we take a look at the left side, so here you can see basically there are different drones, uh, let's say from DJI, that uh, in this case, I think let's just assume there's two pilots here. So each pilot has their own drone and they're flying the drones only using the remote controller and the tablet. So these remote controllers, uh, they can simply connect, or I mean the tablets, they can connect to the same access point and then the coordinator would see where these drones are exactly and would also be able to see the video coming from these drones on his system. Similarly, uh, when you would be using either Parrot uh, or Artopelt or PX4 based drones, um, again, as previously already mentioned, then this tablet would simply be replaced by another computer that this pilot would have. And so it's actually possible to connect then this computer to the main uh, computer of the coordinator. And then let's say in the main tent where from which you would lead the search rescue operation, there you would see firstly all the drones flying on the screen. You'd see the video if necessary. You could also see telemetry data coming from the drones or if there's some sensors attached to the drones, you can see these sensor values as well. So, and you can also actually have as many people as necessary working here. And so these, this wouldn't be only a single device. This can also be multiple devices. Uh, one other important thing is that we're also actually now working on developing, not on developing, but it's actually kind of already developed. We're just waiting for, uh, well, to, for, I guess, for it to become more mainstream. So essentially, uh, recently, uh, the Pixhawk uh, 2.1 cube orange autopilot has been released and it also has uh, the support of ADSB. And we actually did already do tests. And uh, so when you're flying the drone with uh, the ADSB receiver, as in the case of the, um, uh, the Pixel Cube Orange, then actually the data from this, it was transmitted back to the ground. I'll show you a video of this in a moment. And then essentially, if any manned aircraft approaches this area, then you'll actually be able to see the manned aircraft on the GCS map. And so in this kind of scenario, uh, basically the coordinator would see if there's any manned airplane or helicopter approaching with an ADS-B transponder. 
and then he could give the command to the people flying the drones that okay we need to land all the drones because this aircraft is approaching uh, similarly if similarly if you don't want to use the sato pelt actually we at ugcs we also support uh different uh, adsb receivers that you can simply use on the ground one example from these would be the u avionics adsb receiver so you can simply connect this to your computer and you'd also see essentially all incoming aircraft with ADSB transponders connected in the area. And so in this case, actually, uh, what you can use is that on these computers that are the pilots are using with the Parrot and Artifile drones. So these computers can simply actually have the GCS uh, Pro license. So they do, do not need to have the enterprise solution. So with, uh, with how everything is set up here, Actually, you can only use the enterprise. Um, there, there's no need to use enterprise in all the devices. You can, for example, just use it on the main one, and then the rest, for example, could be used on the pro license. Yeah. So again, like I already mentioned, uh, so okay, on the on the main computer, what you would have is you'd have, of course, again, 3D map uh, with the um, the KML data loaded as well as custom maps. Uh, you'd see the telemetry trick from all the drones. So it doesn't matter if the drones made by Parrot by DJI. Uh, or it, maybe it's some custom device. So all of them can essentially work together united in the single system. And so the mission planning can be quite coordinated. You can, of course, you know, use radio communications to communicate to the pilots. And also you'd be able to see the videos coming from all the drones, plus see the data coming from the ADSB uh, transponders. Uh, so what you can see here, uh, this is actually kind of a picture from one of the vans of one of our customers. So they basically have this van that they have um, um, sort of made exactly for the purpose of uh, using it for drone operations. So what you can see here is that on both sides of the screen uh, or on both sides of the picture, you can see these screens. So on both of them, they're running GCS. Then in the very middle of it, uh, here you can see this is the main uh, telemetry viewer where they're basically seeing all the telemetry parameters coming from the drones. Uh, so as they switch between different drones, the telemetry parameters will switch as well. Uh, here you can actually see these are seem to be the, the controllers uh, for the well the remote control for the drones but uh, in this case of course you can also use a separate remote controller but what's important is that uh, the uh the well i guess this would be the the main kind of the main person in charge of these operations then it's actually also possible to take over control of the camera so how it would work would be that let's say a pilot's flying the drone then suddenly the main controller realizes that, okay, there's something suspicious in this area. So then you can tell the pilot to hold the drone and then you can take over the camera and move the camera around and zoom in. So this is all that's possible with uh, our system. So here you can see a video uh, where we basically demonstrated how the uh, ADSB receiver works. So if you'll see any kind of incoming aircraft in the area, then this aircraft will be displayed on the GCS map. So you can see here, in the center of the screen, you can see the airplane. And also here you can see the, uh, uh, the data from it. So this is when you're essentially just using uh, an ADSB receiver or that when you're using, I guess, I think, yeah, this, so this video is actually filmed uh, by using the uh, Pixhawk uh, Orange Autopilot. So it seems to be that there's only one aircraft in, at least in this, this example. Of course, if there would be multiple aircrafts, uh, you know, and nearby, then you would see all of them. And actually, you can see kind of towards the end of the video that there's another airplane that we're seeing over here. And so here, um, so up until now, you kind of saw the screen from UGCS, you saw the telemetry viewer. And so here, I just want to kind of give you an example of how everything would look like uh, when using the, the mobile device. So here, uh, I believe this is an iOS device that's being used. And so this is kind of what would the pilot see when operating the drone in the area. Uh, one other important thing that's, um, I'll kind of wind it back a bit. So actually, as far as the routes go in GCS, it is possible to kind of um, to plan the routes on the uh, main computer and then you can simply upload the routes uh, to the mobile device. So this means that when the pilot goes to the field, he already has the route pre-planned and can simply launch the drone uh, like that. Uh, this will be also uh, mentioned a bit later in the presentation, especially in the example of when, you can imagine probably a case when a, some security guard is using a drone for perimeter surveillance and uh, he or she maybe has some limited knowledge on how to, uh, 
how to plan the missions and so on. So then you can just pre-plan the mission and there's not even going to be any, any possibility for this person to maybe uh, make some mistakes by altering the mission. So they can simply upload the mission that you have made and they can simply, let's say, fly the mission a few times a day to, for, for example, monitor the perimeter of a certain area. So you can see the route is essentially being opened. Then you just choose kind of which route you want to fly with the drone. And then this route is uploaded and then you can basically just launch the drone on, uh, on this flight. It's also, of course, normally here in the mobile application, you're also seeing the video feed coming from the drone. If the drone is equipped with a camera, this would be in the case of DJI drones. And again, in the case of Artpel drones, there you would simply see the video on the computer screen. And then this video, you can then send further uh, to some endpoint or some video server or where you, you would uh, essentially receive it. Okay, so I think uh, let's now move on over to case number three. So this would be using drones for perimeter security and for perimeter surveillance. Uh, so the main, main challenges, like I already mentioned uh, just a moment ago, is that firstly, oftentimes you might be working with non-professional pilots uh, who maybe have limited knowledge in mission planning. And what they might do is that may, they may, might simply be able to, you know, put the battery in the drone, turn everything on, and then you just teach, to teach them how to simply upload the mission, how to launch the drone, and essentially just gather the data for you. Uh, video streaming in this case uh, would be done over local Wi-Fi or over LTE. And also uh, it would be necessary to kind of respond to uh, these events uh, from the security software. So you'd also, it will be also important for you to be able to understand. So where are these, uh, where are these locations exactly? Where is the drone looking towards? And so uh, where, let's say if the perimeter is breached, so where is this happening exactly? Uh, and another challenge that we faced here is integrating drone video into standard video monitoring software. So let's say, uh, let's say maybe you are already using some kind of static video cameras around uh, a certain perimeter or maybe in some, well, some building essentially. And uh, then it's basically possible with our system to also integrate this drone video. So in addition to your normal security footage, you can also see the video coming uh, from the drone as the drone is flying. And yeah, one thing is additionally that, so all the videos that are filmed mainly, they are geo-referenced. So also this kind of gives you the, uh, this basically makes it possible to uh, later when you're reviewing the video footage, so you can know exactly where the drone was at what point uh, when, let's say it saw this thing happen there on the video. So examples of this would probably include uh, using a system in some open pit mines, uh, using it in industrial areas, in some construction sites, or in ports as well. So kind of these industrial areas, these would be basically ideal for using drones, uh, mainly because in, in these areas, it might be a bit hard to maybe put some static video monitoring uh, solutions, let's say, especially in the open pit mine case. So how, how would you put video cameras there, right? So maybe a more, um, a better way would be to simply use drone. And then let's say every, uh, like every certain time interval, you would fly the drone around this area, take the video footage, monitor the video in in real time, maybe even take some photos from which you can later stitch together a 3D model. So all of this is basically made possible. So uh, in this area, basically the system would work as follows. So here again, in the very center, you would have the GCS server and the GCS uh, video server that you would use. So again, if you would be using a DJI drone, then you would simply use some mobile device with the GCS for DJI set on it. Uh, this would again, connect to the main server uh, from uh, then again to the main server, the main flight coordinator here could connect. And also the, uh, maybe you have, could have a separate video monitoring room from which you could also connect to the main server. Uh, so again, kind of with each of these steps, as you notice that if we go, let's say from case number one to where we are now, that's uh, essentially everything is scalable here. So you can uh, kind of choose which components you want to run on what systems. And one other possibility actually about which I'll talk in a moment as well is that there's even a possibility to use the server on the cloud. So there's even no need to keep it locally. If you maybe want to have it somewhere in, in a remote location, then you can do this as well. 
Yeah, and in this case, you can also see it on this side that basically, uh, like I already said before, you can use other drones such as Parrot or drones based on autopilot or PX4, which would be then connected to their own uh, laptop of the pilot. And again, this data, the drone telemetry, the drone video, this would all be sent to the main server or the video server. And so there from here, let's say, if uh, you can actually imp even implement some automatic monitoring solutions about the, these also, we'll talk a bit later here in the webinar, but basically um, then if the if a drone detects something uh, that's that's a bit off, that's uh, maybe the parameter is being breached or something like this, then also it's possible to uh, kind of launch these alarms from the security software or to kind of basically put everything together so that then the video from a certain time frame, when the alarm is triggered, that this video is also saved. So everything is, is basically possible here. Yeah, and kind of coming back to uh, these like keynotes that all the you probably saw before. Uh, so again, then essentially everything is kind of tied together. Uh, you can see the telemetry from all the drones. This can be integrated with our .NET SDK uh, to security uh, alarms. Also, additionally, uh, you can essentially send RTSP video uh, to different endpoints, such as um, basically some video monitoring software, such as Milestone, Genetech, and uh, our different ones as well. All the videos that are uh, recorded uh, with the, the video player. So all of these are actually geo-referenced, like I already mentioned earlier. And so yeah, it just gives you a lot more data and a lot more kind of to, to work with. Uh, here also I've made one example where you have multiple drones working in the same area. So let's now press uh, play over here. So you can see basically now there's three different missions. So the drone that's over here, this drone is simply kind of going through its normal uh, like perimeter monitoring. So you can see just monitoring the streets that are over there. Uh, this, drone's, this drone's doing simply, uh, it's, it's quite a similar thing, but again, this is just perimeter monitoring. So in GCS, you can set different points of where you want the drone to fly and then set how many circles you want the drone to do around this perimeter. And in this case, this third drone, this is simply doing a, a photogrammetry mission in which case uh, you can kind of measure how much of, let's say, if there's some kind of some piles of you know, sand or rocks or something like this, so you can measure how many of these are still left by uh, doing this flight, taking these images, stitching them together, and essentially creating uh, a 3D model of that. So yeah, essentially you can have as many drones as your screen real estate allows to have simultaneously. And uh, with the GCS also keep in mind that uh, you can you can kind of use it with different uh, complex terrain. You can import your own terrain, your own maps. Uh, here you can also see that around a certain place, there's the no-fly zone that we have set. Um, and yeah, so uh, I think you probably have some questions about all of this and these we will cover at the end of the webinar where our R&D director will also join in. Um, and yeah, so I think this is, uh, maybe this is interesting for you if you have not, have not yet seen EGCS, although I expect like many of you probably already have so now let's move uh, further. So here you can see, like I mentioned, that our video streaming can be integrated with some custom video monitoring uh, solutions or even some standard ones. So in this case, it's integrated with uh, the milestone. Hopefully the video will be uh, somewhat uh, okay for you. So again, here you can see the general setup that uh, essentially you're using the drone together with GCS for DJI, then this is all connected to the computer or even a few computers where you can see firstly the desktop mission planning software, EGCS, and then you can see the video feed as well. And so then this video feed can be transmitted to uh, standard video monitoring so solutions such as Milestone. And so let's uh, press play. So you can see DJI Mavic drone taking off. And essentially, uh, as the drone's flying, you can see the video here uh, on the mobile application. And so then this, uh, the pilot uh, can actually transmit this video to the observer. So then the observer will also be able to see that. And so then this video can then be forwarded to uh, video monitoring software, such as Milestone. In this case, you can simply see that this um, um, kind of endpoint is being added here.
And so here you can see that at the end, uh, the uh, the person who's doing all the video monitoring, they can also see the video coming from the drone in real time, in addition to their normal security footage that they're uh, seeing day by day. So uh, now we have arrived to case number four. This would be distributed inspections. Uh, so what that mean by that is you can probably imagine that um, there are companies who are international. So they're working all over the world and they might have sites, let's say in the US, uh, in the uh, in South America, in uh, maybe in Asia, and maybe let's say the headquarters might be located somewhere in Europe. Um, so uh, obviously there's different time zones involved, different local people as well. Uh, so these would be kind of the main challenges in this case. So um, again, you'd probably be working with some maybe inex inexperienced local pilots who you know might maybe not have that much knowledge uh, of uh, flying drones and of flying missions. They can just uh, hold the remote controller or launch the drone and then that's it. Um, it will also be important that you get, of course, consistent quality aerial footage from regular flights and that you can monitor this footage and kind of go through it as time goes on, maybe uh, review past footage one good example would be uh, if you imagine, let's say, some company that's building real estate. So then for them, it would be important to see how the work is progressing and they, they can compare either these pictures or this video to the video and pictures uh, from the past data. Um, yeah, of course, another challenge would be that there's hundreds or even thousands of kilometers between the survey site and the headquarters. So you would need to ensure that the, the data exchange in these cases is secured. And of course, also uh, due to the pandemic, you'll also have to ensure that all of this uh, is still working uh, under the reduced mobility. So uh, in this case, essentially to ensure the connection, what you can use, you can use a, a VPN or you can simply use a 4G or LTE connection. Uh, so in this case, the way it would work would be that actually the drone uh, together, together with the remote controller in the case of, uh, sorry, I'll just go back a bit. In the case of DJI drones, uh, that's so you can simply set the address of where the uh, the main server is, as long as both devices are connected to the VPN, and then this uh, drone telemetry and the drone video can be transmitted over the uh, VPN uh, or over the 4G LTE network, essentially to any place in the world in real time. And there, where you have the uh, video server, so what happens is essentially that all the video is stored. And then later on, you can access either the videos or the photos that are taken there. You can see the geo reference. You can see the timestamp when they were taken. Uh, similarly, with uh, uh, either Parrot or Ardupelt or PX4 based drones, it's kind of the same thing, but the same as previously. Uh, this a mobile device, Android or iOS, this is now replaced by a laptop, Windows or Mac. And so one other uh, solution that we offer is the Atlas Cloud. Uh, so the Atlas essentially allows you to uh, Kind of automatically uh, detect different objects on maps. So, um, and essentially any data that you get gather with the drone. One example would be, let's say, that you're flying over the city and that you want to monitor where where there are some cracks on on the pavement. So, with Atlas, you can do this. So, then how it would work would be that uh, the pilot who's flying the drone can do the mission with the drone. Then they can load the data upload the data to the Atlas, and then a data analyst or the headquarters can simply connect to the Atlas system, and then they can access this data. If you want to find more about the Atlas and essentially automatic detection of, uh, of different objects and machine learning, so there then at the end of this webinar, when we'll have the Q&A section, you can ask these questions also to our R&D director, Alexei. And yeah, I think uh, then probably here um, this would be it. So I think we can move further. So again, uh, these are kind of already some of the things that I mentioned. That's uh, the data that transfer is protected using the VPN. Uh, the video is sent in real time to the headquarters and it's also geo-referenced for communication you're using 4G LTE internet connection. And that this aerial photography can actually also be stored in Atlas. So this can kind of uh, serve yeah, as a way of uh, as a way of storage and as a way of both sides, so the pilots and the analyst accessing this data. And so case number five would be automating uh, drone service provider operations. And uh, this is a bit more custom uh, case. Uh, and essentially what we do have is we have a WebSocket API that essentially would allow you to kind of build these uh, large scale dispatch centers for drones. And if you are maybe interested in building something like this, 
um, to kind of building essentially your own user interface uh, using the WebSocket and then connecting to our server. Uh, if we're building these large scale applications, then yeah, you can uh, send us an email and then uh, we can give you access to that and then we can talk to you in uh, more detail. Uh, so like I mentioned, uh, there's different also deployment options. You can either uh, deploy the GCS server uh, or the video server uh, locally on your local network, or you can actually also uh, deploy it in the cloud. So uh, it's possible to use Microsoft Azure. It's also, also possible to use uh, Amazon cloud services. And actually, so in, um, in 2020, uh, we're not kind of advertising this that much, but so in 2020, we did help more than 50 companies uh, to enhance their uh, distributed drone operations. And I think this gave both them and us uh, very valuable knowledge on how to do this. So I think if you're interested, then also you can uh, get in touch with us. Uh, we can maybe tell you a bit more. Uh, we can think kind of how you could use drones in your specific use case, and we can essentially discuss this. Uh, so everything that I showed to you in this webinar, this is all made possible using GCS Enterprise. And for the enterprise, there's uh, essentially two main pricing options. You can either uh, use it, use kind of the sus subscription of $99 per month, or you can uh, per simply purchase a perpetual license of $42,000. Uh, for this webinar also, we're running a special offer that's if you purchase the perpetual 2000 uh, license, then you would also get the two hour free training uh, live with one of our engineers who would uh, help you with everything, explain you how to use the software, explain you how to use all the solutions that uh, we have. Uh, and uh, let's say if you use the uh, subscription method, then also you can actually use uh, this discount where we're offering 30% off uh, for the training per group. And if you want to also find out more about everything that was shown here in the webinar, you can go to the website video.egcs.com to see more and also to learn more about the enterprise license of EGCS. So I think now maybe let's jump into the Q&A. Um, also, like I said, we have our research and development director, Alexey Yankulevich, who is also here in the webinar. And so uh, let me just now take a look at some of the questions that you might have. And uh, yep, so essentially, if you do have any, please put them in the Q&A section, and then we can now try to answer them live. Yeah, so one question is, yeah, about the perpetual license, does it give you lifetime update and support? So the answer is no. Uh, it gives you one year of uh, updates and support. And after this year, uh, you, there will be an additional fee for that. Uh, I, ca I can answer this question. I yep. mean, the question about the encryption. So so this is this is Alexei. So uh, is the communication between client and server encrypted? Uh, we do not impose any specific encryption uh, on the application level. But <clears throat> uh, we use uh, SSL for uh, connections uh, over, over HTTP. And for our internal protocols, we typically recommend to, uh, if you need encryption, we, we, we recommend to rely on some certified things like a VPN connection. So uh, if you have any special case, then Technically, the architecture of UGCS, it allows to incorporate additional uh, additional steps to the data, data transmission pipeline, but, but, but that's something that has to be discussed separately, you know, because, <clears throat> because in many countries, the requirements for the uh, cryptography can be very different and it also may require some certification. So like if you have, anything specific in mind, just, just let us know, just drop us a message to support. Uh, we'll be happy to discuss it. Uh, so another question is, um, do we plan on adding uh, a new vehicle such as the next uh, DJ Mavic? Uh, so regarding this, uh, we are always kind of uh, looking, looking kind of into it, what new drones are coming out. Uh, recently, also, we added support for DJI M300, uh, and for this, we'll also add support for our, our industrial line. Uh, regarding the Mavic Air 2, Alex, maybe you can uh, tell a bit more about this. I'm not familiar with exactly this one, but I think the support should yeah, be there uh, as we, well. We, we, uh, we, we do support the first version of Mavic Air. So we, we're actually we are thinking about Air 2. Uh, uh, we uh, actually... We, we, uh, now we are also thinking about Mavic Mini too, uh, because you know DJ has many Mavics now. Uh, 
do you actually, actually, may I also ask you a question? Do you primarily use it for is it just manual flights and for video surveillance or what is the application you have in mind that, that would be very helpful actually? Because Mavic Air is, is a very specific drone. Uh, and I would say that uh, based like on our conversations with our clients, it's not very popular among our clients, but maybe we just miss something. So just could you, could you please give us a bit more kind of context of how to use it yep so Bastian, please uh if you heard that then yeah please uh, write um in, in the q a another question where you simply just answer this and then yeah then we can also get in touch with you later on and see how can we help you and uh regarding the uh price okay price regarding the price is it limited to numbers of drones connected is it the price for cloud configuration as well uh so uh, the prices, uh, all the prices uh, uh, are for a license uh, of the software that, it, so it can be installed either on a physical hardware or you can install it on, in your own cloud. So we do not offer UGCS as a service. Uh, in terms of uh, licensing options, so, uh, uh, in case of enterprise license, uh, one enterprise license covers uh, one seat of coordinator and it allows you to have up to 10 uh, remote connections, for example, of uh, pilots with mobile applications, U of UGCS for DJI. So that, that's what covered by an enterprise license. So also uh, you can connect to uh, the instance with a UGCS enterprise license and other laptops which uh, work, uh, uh, which have UGCS professional instances, for example, uh, the instances for the pilots who have to control non DJ drones. So that, that's uh, like, that's what we uh, shown uh, on our slides when we had like a, a coordinator in the middle uh, of the chart. And we had several pilots with UGCS for DJI mobile application, several pilots with laptops controlling, for example, pixel based drones. So yeah, so again, one enterprise license, one seat of coordinator and up to 10 remote connections. Um, how do, you, how do I get a live video feed on a laptop from Pixhawk whilst using a hero link? Um, so uh, we have uh, the, the general approach for Pixhawk based drones uh, in terms of video is the following. So we have a special application which typically can take as a video feed from the video link. So, for example, the video link, it can be either RTSP endpoint uh, or it can be uh, just uh, uh, a video encoder uh, connected to a laptop, uh, which uh, can be considered uh, like a normal uh, web camera. So we have a special application which can grab video from such sources and then transmit to the remote installation of our video server. So this application, it grabs video from the video source and also it gets telemetry from this drone and incorporates this telemetry into the video feed. Uh, so if, if, if it sounds a bit uh, uh, too complicated, then like, feel, feel free to drop us a message to support. We'll, we'll be more than happy to to work with you on your like, configuration. Yeah, and uh, if I can also maybe mention then, uh, if you have some like more technical questions, so maybe you are already a user of UGCS, so then what you can do, you can see here on the screen, there's this normal uh, email address, UGCS at UGCS.com. But if you have some technical requests, uh, maybe something isn't working the way you expect, maybe you just, you just want to get your system working, then you can email us at support at UGCS.com. And so we can get in touch with you. Um, so the uh, next question, 
what are yearly update support fees for UGCS Pro? Uh, this information can be found in our pricing section. Uh, it's, it's open. So yeah, here, yeah. Uh, and yeah. So for, for professional, uh, for professional, it's uh, 120 US dollars per year, starting from the second year. Um, next one, I'm trying to set up, set up a drone team for simultaneous uh, okay, it's scanning inspection, which license is good. Uh, actually, that depends on your scenario. If, if, uh, if you just need a certain level of parallelization, uh, but you don't need uh, a coordination of uh, uh, pilots, then you can go just with uh, pro licenses for each individual pilot. If you want to set up a coordinator uh, also to have a coordinator in this setup, then you might get an enterprise license, additional enterprise license for coordinator, which will monitor everything like all telemetry streams from your uh, pilots and maybe even video feed. So that, that, that actually depends. So you can, uh, it depends on the workflow that you want to uh, implement. So uh, Alex, uh, I, think I saw one interesting question uh, yep. that was also here. This was uh, regarding ADSB. So the question is, maybe I missed it while we were talking, but is there any function or plan to implement something like yeah. automatic collision avoidance or auto landing in case uh, proximity with manned aircraft is detected? Mm. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So for now, we uh, generate a warning to the pilot. Uh, we, uh, to, be, to be honest, we do not plan to, uh, uh, to implement any automations like automatic landing because anyway, anyway, in my opinion, uh, uh, in such situations, uh, the uh, pilot has to be notified for sure, but the final decision uh, 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 should be the pilot's decision because uh, software and computer, it cannot uh, make a proper deconfliction in all such situations. So, so I, so the, then the answer is no, we were not going to uh, implement uh, any, any, any automatic rules for uh, such things, just, just because pilot has to be in control in such so, situation. Yeah. yeah. So essentially that's, that would be our approach to that. Um, so this question we answered. Another one that's also it seems actually quite interesting to me is regarding Atlas. Maybe I'll, you can also I'll say answer about this. Uh, so the question is, uh, are the uh, AI image uh, recognition algorithms so are they trained for agriculture such as uh, plants and uh, and soil or you know the different kind of uh, either dry dry soil uh, more uh, kind of uh, wet soil and so on. Uh... So the Atlas is a platform which helps you to train your own detectors. So, and the detector uh, can, uh, can be trained for, trained for any uh, uh, object on your image, which has some uh, identifiable visual footprint. So we have uh, cases uh, for agriculture on our website and for example, we have a weed detection. Also, uh, in case of soil, uh, also we are going to release shortly a case about tree counting. That's, that's also possible. Uh, and uh, in case of soil, so if you want to distinguish different areas of soil and if this uh, areas of soil has a, a kind of a different texture different look, then of course, Atlas uh, uh, can be very helpful here. So let's see what other questions we have. Uh, actually, I see more questions. Uh, so, but seems like we are uh, very squeezed in time. Uh, Maybe let's take like uh, last few ones and uh, okay, yeah. Let, yeah, let's 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 answer a few more uh, and 
Okay, so I think one, one that seems actually quite good is this from Chandler. Uh, so the question is regarding the coordinator, um, is there a feature to visualize coverage of the whole survey or of the paths? Uh, in agriculture, we have a paintbrush that shows uh, the visual of a path flown over the map. So is there some like similar uh, feature? Maybe the similar feature is planned. Okay, yeah, that's... Uh, so for, 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 for now, we, uh, uh, d we, we have only footprint, but it uh, doesn't leave any trail after it. So, uh, so, so the, the, but we have a such thing like a telemetry a storage and telemetry player. So, uh, if you fly with, uh, with a pretty fine uh, pattern, you can always see which part of the route already passed and which part of the route uh, uh, remains. Exactly. So uh, normally when you would be flying with a DJI drone, then as you can see here, this mission currently, it's mainly in like this light green color. And then as the drone will be flying through the mission, then you will see that the parts that have already been flown. So these parts would be shown now in this kind of darker green color. And this is also how it's possible for you to then, uh, let's say if you need to interrupt the mission somewhere in the middle to change the battery, then uh, the GCS will actually automatically offer you to restart the mission from where you left off to simply change the battery and then, you know, uh, keep flying. Uh, actually, I found another question about Atlas. So can you use Atlas to detect defect, defects like cracks, spelling? Uh, the short answer is yes. So Atlas can work with two types of data with uh, just, uh, just ordinary uh, photos like uh, PNG or JPG and uh, uh, also with Orta mosaics. So uh, yeah, you can, you, you can train detectors for uh, both uh, types of data. And uh, yeah, if you have images of your uh, facade, then you can upload these images to Atlas as well. So yeah, one, another example is, so do we support any, um, any ADSB receivers that support Ethernet or Wi-Fi uh, and direct connection to GCS server? Um, so maybe you can mention about the U Avionics ADSB receiver they also talked about. Uh, yes, uh, that's uh, something that we do uh, support right now. Uh, I, I remember that we do support the model which can be connected to USB uh, of the computer. Uh, but also one cool thing that, uh, uh, and I don't know, uh, so if, if you're aware of that, uh, is that uh, in case of uh, Pixel Cube Orange, the ADSB receiver uh, already integrated to the sort of pilot. So, and UGCS can get a stream uh, from this ADSB receiver and show. I, I actually, Krista demonstrated that uh, during the webinar, but just, just one more time. So, um, re receivers, uh, in case of Pixel, they are already, in, in case of Cube Orange, the receiver is already uh, inside the autopilot, so which, which is very uh, convenient. Uh, another question that, uh, so this is one that was found by Sabine. Uh, so, uh, kind of how, so the question is, how can you manage and or track a few groups of drones at the same time? So maybe we can talk also a bit about this. Okay, how can you manage and track a few groups of drones at the same time? Uh, that's so, 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 uh, you will see all the drones on your screen. And, uh, if you, if you, if you, if you think about some grouping that in user interface, now we, uh, the only way to group drones is to have, uh, two, uh, individual missions. The mission is where you can have a group of drones. So if you will have, if you want to have just two separate groups of drones, then uh, you'll have to switch between missions. Or you can put your drones into one mission and uh, give some reasonable names to drones. 
so you could distinguish between uh, these drones and you will see all these drones on, on, on the same map. So I, I hope that answers your question. So because basically it's the UGC is one of the main uh, basic features that it can handle many drones in one mission as we see ha here. There are three routes and you can uh, like upload them uh, each to uh, one drone so you have three drones, three routes in one screen, in one mission. So uh, yeah, another question that uh, is there. So uh, that's from Matt, and I guess uh, he just wants to clarify a bit. So if he has uh, one enterprise license with 10 connected drones, um, do I additionally need to have 10 professional licenses, one for each of the drones? So, so uh, if you use mobile application for DJI, so uh, we we uh, mobile application is free. So if you want to have ten separate laptops, which uh, uh, will uh, will be used to control non DJI drones, then for each laptop, uh, you will have a separate uh, license. Uh, so uh, so so technically, we we charge for operator seats. The only exception is uh, the mobile application, uh, which is free. The subscription comes with 40 days uh, free trial. So <clears throat> you can just subscribe for the subscription and use the trial to try it out, how it works. So Christoph, thank you for the presentation. Alexei, thank you for the questions. Thank you all for coming and joining us. Thank yeah. you from my side as well. And so hope to see you in uh, future webinars or uh, hopefully even trainings.